All right, guys, I'm going to be showing you an execution. I'll briefly uh, dress up the chart. So I'm going to be using Forex.com because now they've integrated proper spreads, as you can see in uh, here. Spread is proper now. And the thinking is simple, truly, truly simple. It's just previous day's high is likely to be taken. And I want to be getting long at this institutional order flow entry drill say stop can be of around eight pips don't need more click here's the execution stop is below the consequent consequent encroachment and all of these bc because even if this entire bc is filled it doesn't mean that the trade idea is invalidated okay that's important now um, previous day size you can see was not hit by a little bit and I did check on different brokers and it's all good none of them hit it so the perfect entry would be right here okay because it's the uh, BC coupled with the daily CB high now from the low let me actually have it. from the low to the eye you can see where 62 lies it's roughly there, but I don't care necessarily to see 822 print. What I care about is the overall logic. Okay, so now 62 is perfectly lining up uh, with the pre value gap in here. And let me, yeah, so basically that's it. And for the trade idea, I'm going to break it down this way. So since we are stuck in a consolidation for me, I'm going to be using the concept of uh, grading the swing from this high to this low, deep discount, deep premium, equilibrium. We moved from a deep discount, odds are we are going to reach for equilibrium. At equilibrium, we have this swing high, which is a previous day's high, okay? Because we have this high right here, and then of course nothing in here, but this high is the next one after this is taken. Average daily range for euro. Let me check in the other platform because I, I tend to trust that one a little bit better. Hold on. Let me pause the video, sorry. So I was saying the average daily range for euro um, on my MT4, which is the one I use, is 73 pips. Therefore, I move from here here would fulfill that range and you can see it's way past 50% so that's a good target dropping into the M5 we can see how we are digging a little bit deeper but that's okay so how am I going to manage this specific trade idea it's gonna be fairly simple as you can see I don't have a take profit okay but the take profit is going to be placed in the market because I do trade with targets in mind and the target is going to be this one right here and I always round up or down if necessary so you can see the stop is at 60 and the or 6 I don't care much about the pipettes I always round this down to either 5 or 0 and the take profit is at 7 or 70 so it's going to be there but I will be taking a partial up here because that's a high probability target to, to hit but past that I don't know okay so it's important that something off something goes off there now of course uh, given that I entered with uh, 1 million or whatever I'll be taking 80% uh, off because the idea is more of a scalp extra is good but not necessary for me to profit so lots of things important here and this is directly derived from my trading plan the stop loss goes either where traders have been trapped or where price action has been efficient. Technically, the reason for my stop loss being in here is because price action in here has been efficient. So I'd never want to be, I'd never place my stop within this gap because the trade idea would not be invalidated. And that's a pretty good idea from a guy that sadly passed away. Um, and um, it's sad that I don't even remember his name. Uh, David something, hold on. So I found it. His name, that's the name, David Paul. And there was a video where he mentioned how stop loss goes where stop loss needs to go. And that quote, as stupid as it might sound, 
made my my eagerness to want tight stops completely disappear. I was like, oh, okay, stop loss needs to go where the trade idea is invalidated. Now, if we go through this uh, level, which is now an inversion level, and we go through the BC, the consequent encroachment and the low, and this level in here, so technically I have four PDAs working for me, it's okay to be stopped, but not before that, okay? Besides, eight pip stop is not a large stop, okay? I'm not here going with 25 pips, even though if you trade the H1, I don't think it's too high anyway, if you're getting 50 pips uh, worth of range. But uh, that's a little bit of a rant. So far, what do I wanna see? Is this move lower a fair value gap? And given the narrative in place in the market, in the market right now, no, that's not a fair value gap. That's just a move lower, and this should be acting as an inversion for value gap. Let me actually have a better color. This is not the best. So let's uh, let's be cool. Inversion for value gap. And we can study that on the M1. Now, study how we went into it. And now we're coming back in just to test this potential order block and this small little bit of a gap. Now, is it okay to be dealing within this range? Absolutely. Absolutely fine. Um, that wouldn't change my idea. If we hit this level and then quickly go lower, as long as we stay within this range and we keep bouncing, that's completely fine for me. So let's have this also in the chart. So if we do this, okay, but then I want to see breach and two options after we breach it. Either we retest and go higher or we don't even retest. The preferred one is that we don't even retest, but that's okay even if we, if we do, okay? So since this is gonna be on the M1, I'm gonna make it a little bit more like that. So I guess I'll uh, be pausing the video and update you when something else happens. And by the way, I'm also long in the real account, so it's not all paper trading. <laughs> And to quote unquote prove that, um, that's the screenshot that I've just taken. You can see I actually added two positions, not even one. So I was one in here. As you can see, we dropped. We went through consequent encroachment. That's where I added the long stop down here. And then on the retracement lower, this one right here and the stop you can see is basically the same level as this one. It's where we already filled the, the gap, efficient price action zero business going up there. So if I sometimes uh, might seem distracted, it's because of course I'm managing with real, uh, real money. So bear with me. As you can see, we've perfectly filled the imbalance and now we dropped, hit it lower and going higher. To me, the way we close to the minute or to the second, to these specific levels remains amazing. Even though I've been seeing this for three to four years now. But it never gets old, really. Oh, and just to add something else. Say that you saw this for value gap right here, okay? And for whatever reason, because we all have our reasons, and I'm not saying you are wrong or incorrect in assuming that this was a potential for value gap that could have sent us lower. What I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, should you see or should you be entering at this level right here and you see this behavior where we get in the fair value gap, we try to move away and we come back in, next candle opens, hits the low and starts pulling higher. That's a signal right there that this fair value gap is being respected as support. So you gotta really consider either uh, collapsing the trade or heavily reducing risk, cause odds are you might be wrong. The best fair value gaps will uh, will not have this type of behavior, okay? They will just hit it and go lower. So, same thing can be said in here if you really study it. Move lower, and by the way, I do prefer this type of price action right here, always on the time frames higher than the M1. I'm not the biggest fan of the M1, not that there is anything wrong with it, it's just me. But see how we go lower, we hit it, we start moving lower, and then we reclaim this for value gap. We create a BC, CB, hits it, starts running, say your stop loss was up here, collapse the trade immediately. 
because the market is signaling you that the PDA where you entered is being used as basically the other way around, which is not good, clearly. But that's something that I discovered through my journal. If this is happening, get away, run as quick as possible and preserve capital. Just think about the best trades will have positive feedback almost immediately. And now on the same time frame where we created the imbalance, actually in the M15, probably there's nothing exactly. On the M5, now we closed through. So we did the dealing I was discussing in here on the M1. And now the option is it can retrace, hit it, and then go higher. And the maximum I'm technically allowing for is the immediate rebalance in here, which is truly in sync with the consequent encroachment of, of the inversion for value gap. I Again, I'd prefer not to see this. And by the looks of, looks of it, it's just going to go straight up. Now, there is this consequent encroachment of this week. Let me be perfectly frank with you. With you, I couldn't be caring less about this consequent encroachment. This idea I only use on uh, daily or H4 timeframes. Less than that, I mean, I don't care. At that point, I, I'd be having so many PDAs. I'd be, taking, I'd be needing to take a partial every five pips. And that's not how I trade. I much prefer to take fewer trades, which are high quality like this one with a strong premise where I have a 65 to 70% likelihood of happening something, of course, in my direction, rather than just constantly spamming left and right with partials. Because I don't think that's a really good way to, to approach the market. Because yeah, even if the market turns on you, you're still ending up with some profits, but you will never get big enough wins to really have a big edge in the market. Another thing that I forgot to mention based on uh, the management is now that we had this such, such a positive reaction at this level and we went through a technical premium PDA, my stop can actually be decreased. And it's gonna be decreased not to break even, but to this low right here, where the energetic run has begun, okay? Which is gonna be still in a loss. That's not the point. The point is, if we are technical traders, we manage our trades based on technicals, not on PNL. And that's again, I learned this from Tom Dante. If you wanna check him out, he's an absolute ledge. So, I'll keep you updated when something happens. Remember, 80% goes off here, which would be, with the ID and everything, a pip stop, that would be at 1.7R, okay? Not too shabby, not terrible at all. I'll continue recording, because I know I will be, I'll miss the point exactly when this happens and I will not be recording that. But to make sure that doesn't necessarily happen at 75, I want to create an order of selling 80%. So eight, and that's the order. Of course, since I have one, I have this on, as soon as that's hit, it's gonna reduce everything from the position. Pretty simple. Huh. Um, we can add more confluence to this idea um accumulation manipulation going higher for distribution there is no reason to stop right here because we are not creating this high at a key pda okay so this move lower in here is it a reversal no it's just a retracement lower it's that and voila um, so far, my preferred scenario of not seeing the inversion for value gap being hit is unfolding, and that's good. Let me quickly check Dixie. Okay, Dixie is doing well. Retraced all the way back higher in here. And stopping around this gap, I couldn't be caring less about this one as stated previously. And this previous day is low for Dixie. Notice how Euro is so close to it. Okay, while Dixie is a little bit more away. Why? Euro against the benchmark that is Dixie is a little bit stronger today or has been stronger overall, meaning that longs are just better. 
and say I went into a short on euro. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, on euro. Say I went short in here because we reclaimed the CB. And then I say, okay, I want to see price from here go all the way down here. Okay, fair enough. That's a good idea. But given that this is stronger, I need to be using Dixie to tell me where the ideal exit point should be. And let me open this one right here so we can have both. And Dixie, notice how it traced all the way back up to the daily BC high. Therefore, when this happens, not exactly on Euro, this happens, that's a good exit point, good partial, good whatever. Okay, a little bit of retrace, nothing to be worried about. Three consecutive down candles in here. Let's mark this bullish shoulder block which hit right now, M15, it's all good. Let's see how it unfolds. Oh well, it wants to do the retest of the inversion for value gap. It is what it is, not a big deal. Now, since we are crouching below buy side liquidity, I want to see the market explode. Given that I want to see the market explode, I'm going to be placing my take profits at 19 here, okay? It's a little bit more, but if we went straight up, it was one thing. If we go instead um, this way, where we are reloading again, I want to be having a little bit of a, um, a higher target again. One pip doesn't make a difference, really, but in the long term it might. And if I see that today we actually didn't stop at 990 and we stopped at 6 to 10, that's something I will journal and say, okay, fine, this is what happened. I could have um, boosted or increased my take profit by X amount, and that's something I will go forward on. So let's show what Dix is doing right here. It's coming back higher and is hitting this CB on the M5 with consequent encroachment of the BC. There is this order block right here, small, but still an order block with a small uh, volume imbalance. So this one right here is something that I want to be highlighting. I'm not the happiest that this is retracing. I don't think it was necessary, but I said I will be allowing this market for the immediate rebalance. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, we all have preference in price action, but those don't have necessarily to dictate how we manage a trade because the trade idea is always built for something from something bigger and us stopping ourselves just because intraday's, intraday volatility is a little bit up and down. It's just the wrong approach, in my opinion. And I'm not saying that because I feel entitled to it. It's because the amount of R or percentage or pips that I've lost doing this type of logic, having this type of logic of, oh, no, no, this had to be left open if I wanted to see profits in my trade. Ah, it's, it's absurd. It's literally absurd. Sometimes management is about doing less. So immediate rebalance has happened. We went all the way back down into the inversion for value gap. And in the lower time frames, if we have a inversion for value gap like this, it's okay. It's not ideal again, but it's okay if it goes all the way back down into the discount low. Okay. Not necessarily the worst thing ever. In higher time frame, I want to be more vigilant that the upper portion to consequent encroachment is actually truly respected. 
Now, of course, lower time frame, there is a little bit of extra noise. There is more time distortion. The market can stay in a range more than we want to. In the higher time frames, once it gets moving, it truly gets moving. And it's a little bit easier to forecast those. But hey, here we are, stuck in a trade. The, the risk has been reduced as the as per the trading plan. And we're still looking for those objectives. Nothing has changed in the narrative. Now, I could be all emotional about it. Oh, look, it retraced. Now I'm, I'm going to get stopped out when we have zero confirmation that the stop out is possible right here. I mean, to be fair, we don't know. And we almost never know. There are some times where, okay, I feel strongly about 90% of these setups that it's right here, they tend to work. Again, 90% is not 100%. <laughs> so always keep in mind that each and every moment in the market is truly unique. So if you don't know what's about to happen, and how could you ever know? Trading is a constant process of assessing probabilities and managing yourself. So in 15 seconds, we are going to have the open of New York. Okay? Not, not New York open necessarily, but it's 8.30. Now, daylight savings time, actually for me, it's one hour earlier because I live in Italy, as some of you know. And let's see, this usually brings volatility. When I look at the economic calendar, there is basically nothing. There is nothing for this time of day. So if it's going there, it's going to be based on no news. Um, if you ask me, do you believe there is a macro that begins at 14.30? I'll tell you, no, I don't honestly believe in macros. I just, I just know that. It's a key time of day there, and usually something happens. Volatility is injected, and the reason for that is 14, actually, 8.20 CM New York time is when the bond market opens, and bonds do have an influence in currencies, of course, because it's the interest rate market. All right, M5 swing low has been formed on this candle right here at 8.25 New York. I'm going to highlight it somehow. Oh, yes, this is good. And should we go below this low and I don't see any confirming SNT via either um, Dixie or GBP, I'll have to collapse the trade because there is not been sponsorship on this idea and we are closing within the inversion for value gap level, which is not what I wanted to see. Okay, so that's how I'm going to approach this management right here. As long as it hits consequent encroachment, it's all good. So I'm going to be monitoring other charts to see what's going on there. All right. <clears throat> okay, hitting again the immediate rebalance level or the discount of the fair value gap going higher, the PC. GBP is finding some resistance going lower. <laughs> and this is a trade where I felt very strongly about the direction, yet it's not delivering as I was expecting. That's trading. Hello. Okay, we are taking that low. GBP so far is saying nope. And Dixie took it with more energy than Euro. So, so far, for all I'm concerned, this is what happened. This went for the immediate rebound, for the full closure of the volume imbalance. This is staying again within the range. So, again, no reason to collapse it yet. Also, prolonged consolidation, meaning that. If it has to go, it will go quickly. This entire range has been completely skipped. Let's create some room left.
Now, watching Dixie, something that should happen is this candle right here. I need a down close candle through this, uh, the consequent encroachment right here because right now we are dealing within this level, but I need to see that being left quickly, okay? For this low and this low. The absolute worst thing that could happen is price goes lower, hits the sell side liquidity pool and runs higher again. <laughs> That's what, that would be terrible. So let's highlight the SMT at a key level. Key level doesn't mean it needs to be higher time frame. In, it just needs to be a level where order flow should be respected and sh price should be defended in a certain sense, if you want to say it that way. So this failed to go. And if you were not in a trade, that would technically be a good place to be a buyer right now. Okay, I'm not gonna do it because then everything will be skewed with trading view, which doesn't add two positions. It just uh, moves this one up, and I don't like that. But I, I'm already live to two positions, so I don't want to do, to do anything because we are still within this range, right? High to low. Me adding within this range all the time, it's pretty much pointless. The setup, the setup is remains the same basically. All right. Dixie couldn't close below the consequent encroachment of the BC. So on another run higher on Dixie or a move lower on Euro, I'll just be collapsing the trade. And it is what it is. Of course, first I will be doing it, we'll be doing it in the live account. <laughs> of course. All right, I'm ready there. Again, hitting the order block and the volume imbalance. Jew is having some sell off too. The reality of trading. My stop can now be moved in case I am not fast enough to actually collapse below these lows. Fifteen minutes consolidation, actually eighteen if we're considering also the scandal that is printing. Some decent positive feedback, but I never trust Euro. <laughs> it usually tends to consolidate more than GU, and GU is my favorite pair. Euro is a close second, but not as, as lovable as GBPUSD. Okay, hitting the same level over and over and over again. The, this needs to be, we need to close through it aggressively. In the live account, what I, I will be doing is, since I have two entries, I will be collapsing the second one and then allow for a retracement uh, potentially lower into a deeper discount, running the stops, maybe 
it needs that level of liquidity to run higher again or there is the possibility that this is never a hit today and it's just going to be a wrong trade or wrong idea where I haven't lost anything so that's a good winner technically let's see how it unfolds again Dixie cannot close through this level it's actually using that too many times and uh, the more we hit this level the less I think it's gonna hold <laughs> this is the lowest close we had within the inversion for value gap range You should be you should be seeing my face right now. It's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> and it might come up to your head this question whether I am I annoyed that this is not panning out. And the answer is yes, of course I am annoyed. But as time prog as time advances in your uh, quote unquote expertise and experience in the market. You just realize you have zero, absolutely zero control over this stuff. And the only thing you can manage is what you see in front of the chart. If I don't see, I mean, this is the limbo, basically. Okay? We are, we are in, a, in an area where I don't want to see price actually be there, yet the idea wouldn't be invalidated if we started running from here. So this is the waiting time, man. Guess what? Euro decided to consolidate around this level. <laughs> and Dixie still cannot go through the consequent encroachment right here. All right. Let me check what's there on the M1. Uh, nothing, absolutely nothing. I thought maybe, you know, small for value gap there. Nah, not even that one. Let me actually check. No, no, there's nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I don't know if this is based on uh, daylight savings time where something does change in terms of New York for their timing purpose. I honestly don't know, but it's just slow. I mean, don't get me wrong, Euro can be this slow. That's why I don't like it as much as GPP, but let's see. We need a proper, proper close through either this level, which is the high of the inversion for value gap or the low. As long as we stay in here, remember this. We are staying in a range. When we move, and we come back in and pop, right. And uh, while this trade is on, let me entertain you with some uh, assessing of, of probabilities. Right now, okay, say that I didn't have a trade. I didn't have anything on. It's still more probable that we're going to go higher than lower because we have more reasons to go higher than lower. Put it simply. It's, there is more of a magnet towards the upper end up here for previous day's high rather than a complete reversal out of the blue. Now, it wouldn't be necessarily out of the blue because Dixie would be a consequent encroachment and there is a daily order block right here. Let me see exactly the level. It's at uh, basically 40, so it's uh, right here. And that was hit twice, but again, it wouldn't wouldn't be probably enough.
she, the market makers knew I was gonna record the video <laughs> and they stopped price just because of me. Yeah, imagine that. So what do I do when stuff like this happens? I just pray and hope. <laughs> no, JK, I do nothing. I sit and I stare at price. And if I feel like, oh, okay, now it's on the M5, okay, so it's a little bit more fast paced. But if something like this is happening on the M30 or H1, I'm just gonna read a book or watch some YouTube, I swear, I don't do anything else. I still stay in front of the computer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. See, now it's rallying. Am I getting excited? No, because Yuri's a bitch. And that's time distortion. When price is at a level and nothing is happening. Time distortion. Let me check the H1 right here. Um, David Paul, you can actually stay in the background. All right, M15, it looks like it's uh, doing something now. This candle right here might feel scary, but you want to be waiting for the close or if the close is bad, always wait for the very next candle. So next candle did this. Okay, all good. Still an up candle. And notice how every time there is a reversal, oh, well, not every time, but often, the candle looks quite scary. So my entry near was when this can down candle was starting to drop very, very quickly. I don't care. I'm buying that. Looks scary. Look how bearish it is. That's a buy. Oh my god, look how quick. And this is better visible on the M1 maybe. Yeah, look. Boom. Okay, it's the end. The market's going to go lower. Runs the stops. Pops higher. All right. Um... Let's not get our ops up. Because, I mean, it's too... 2 minutes and 40 seconds, Euro is able to come back into the range and stop here. <laughs> okay, if it does that now, I want to be out of the trade. So I'm reducing my stop even further to 65 right here. And I'm doing the same thing on the live account. Just give me a second there. So, oh, okay. Ah, uh, 60. 60 is good. I prefer 60. It's more technically sound, because it's at the very bottom of a level that we tested a few times. So if it's going to go through here, it's going to go for that one, and I want to be stopped out. Oh. See, now Dixie is finally leaving that level. And now we can come in the territory of low resistance liquidity run because there is an unobstructed pathway to the next objective which in my opinion should be as a bare minimum this low which is the lowest low intraday and previous day's low and the full closure of the gap right here on the daily chart which i realized i didn't show you before but that's what i'm talking about previous day's high previous day's low i mean friday's high and low same thing And this video is way longer than I expected. Okay, let me update the group. See, exactly as I told you, <laughs> the least preferred scenario unfolded in price action. It is what it is. 
And honestly, you need to have a little bit of sarcasm to really make it in this game because the stuff that happens in price is just ridiculous at a certain point <laughs> and you just got to accept it for what it is. So this did drain a little bit of my mental capital, I'm going to be honest. But hey, it uh, looks like it's spending out. Good stuff. All right. Come on, baby. Okay. Makes no difference, really. Let me take eight here. What difference does it make? This I can remove. Even if it goes there, who cares? But the trade ID, as you can see, it was successful. Previous days I was taken. Now if we start rallying like mad, I mean, it just hit the level, whatever. It makes zero difference. Um, the market now should be free to move. If it comes back in into the range, whatever. 80% off was taken at, uh, what's that? 1.8R minus the commission that we always have in price. And the broker, I mean, it's probably 1.7. It's 80% off, so I don't know. Let me make quick math. Um, 0, 8 times 1, 7. This trade idea right now gave 1.36 banked plus the stop loss in here. It's probably 1.5. If it goes higher, whatever, it's probably closer to 2. But that's not the point. The point is, I'm actually glad this was a tough trade cause, so that you could see how um, sometimes you gotta manage the expectations, but all in all, um, not not a bad one, not a bad one. We did take the low right here on Dixie, and see how we barely took it on Dixie. Euro could go a little get a little bit through it, just because it's a little bit stronger. So with that being said, doesn't matter if we hit this level or we don't. Oh, the trade is completed, in my opinion. I'm gonna go. Uh, I wish you guys a very pleasant week. Stay safe because we have FOMC, NFP, and GBP rates. And see you for the next one. Bye bye.